name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The litany of the most holy name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on us. Jesus, splendor of the Father, have mercy on us. Jesus, brightness of eternal light, have mercy on us. Jesus, King of glory, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of justice, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of the Virgin Mary, have mercy on us. Jesus, most amiable, have mercy on us. Jesus, most admirable, have mercy on us. Jesus, the mighty God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of the world to come, have mercy on us. Jesus, angel of the great council, have mercy on us. Jesus, most powerful, have mercy on us. Jesus, most patient, have mercy on us. Jesus, most obedient, have mercy on us. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, have mercy on us. Jesus, lover of chastity, have mercy on us. Jesus, our lover, have mercy on us. Jesus, God of peace, have mercy on us. Jesus, author of life, have mercy on us. Jesus, model of virtues, have mercy on us. Jesus, zealous for souls, have mercy on us. Jesus, our God, have mercy on us. Jesus, our refuge, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of the poor, have mercy on us. Jesus, treasure of the faithful, have mercy on us. Jesus, good shepherd, have mercy on us. Jesus, true light, have mercy on us. Jesus, eternal wisdom, have mercy on us. Jesus, infinite goodness, have mercy on us. Jesus, our way and our life, have mercy on us. Jesus, joy of the angels, have mercy on us. Jesus, King of the patriarchs, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master of the Apostles, have mercy on us. Jesus, Teacher of the Evangelists, have mercy on us. Jesus, Strength of Martyrs, have mercy on us. Jesus, Light of Confessors, have mercy on us. Jesus, Purity of Virgins, have mercy on us. Jesus, crown of all saints, have mercy on us. Be merciful, spare us, O Jesus. Be merciful, graciously hear us, O Jesus. From all evil, Jesus, deliver us. From all sin, Jesus, deliver us. From your wrath, Jesus, deliver us. From the snares of the devil, Jesus, deliver us. From the spirit of fornication, Jesus, deliver us. From everlasting death, Jesus, deliver us. From the neglect of your inspirations, Jesus, deliver us. Through the mystery of your holy incarnation, Jesus, deliver us. Through your nativity, Jesus, deliver us. Through your infancy, Jesus, deliver us. Through your
your most divine life. Jesus, deliver us. Through your labors. Jesus, deliver us. Through your agony and passion. Jesus, deliver us. Through your cross and dereliction. Jesus, deliver us. Through your sufferings. Jesus, deliver us. Through your death and burial. Jesus, deliver us. Through your resurrection. Jesus, deliver us. Through your ascension. Jesus, deliver us. Through your institution of the most holy Eucharist. Jesus, deliver us. Through your joys. Jesus, deliver us. Through your glory. Jesus, deliver us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. Mercifully attend to our supplications and grant us the grace of your most divine love, that we may love you with all our hearts and in all our words and actions, and never cease to praise you. Make us, O Lord, to have a perpetual fear and love of your holy name, for you never fail to govern those whom you establish in your love. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Soon we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. At EWTN, we want to help bring you closer to the Lord during Lent, Holy Week, the Easter season, and the whole year. This was Mother Angelica's mission, and we continue it every day with you, our EWTN family at our side. In gratitude for your prayers and generosity, we've created a beautiful ebook to inspire you this Easter. Alleluia is our song, the joy of Easter from Scripture and the saints. May you enjoy wisdom from the Bible and our friends in heaven. For your free ebook, visit EWTN.com slash Easter 2024. May God bless you this Easter and always. We're on a mission to explore Mont St. Michel, one of the most storied and architecturally magnificent shrines in all of Europe and one that honors the great archangel St. Michael, whose apparitions to a bishop are said to have inspired this place of prayer, where heaven and earth meet at the edge of the sea. Let's explore Mont St. Michel. Free and on demand this month, 
Acedia, the diabolical in disguise, ruled by apathy, now more than ever. Society needs the love of Jesus Christ to bring new life to a generation that feels they have no purpose. Watch it now at EWTN.com slash on demand. EWTN, live truth, live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the church in Australia and Oceania. Almighty God and Father, we worship you who have given all things their place and time. We ask you to bless the continent of Australia and Oceania. Enrich these lands with an abundance of heavenly graces to prepare souls for the gospel. Let the transmissions of EWTN bring many to faith and conversion so that they might have life and have it to the full in Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. Do this in memory of me.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. Verbum Domini. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of, us, of all of us, as it is written. I have made you father of many nations. He is our God, father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. 
Vergum da mini. Dominus Fabiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteo. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. Verbum Domini. On this solemnity of St. Joseph, the church encourages all the faithful to honor this great saint to ask his intercession and to imitate his virtues. We hear in the gospel today that St. Joseph was a righteous man. He was just, he was holy. He was docile and obedient to the promptings that God had given him. We see this in Joseph's response to the angel to take Mary as his wife, to later flee into Egypt with Mary and the infant Jesus, and then again later to return to the land of Israel. When it was clear to him what God was asking him to do, he put his own plans aside and he followed God's will. He acted promptly according to God's will. And that's a good resolution for us to imitate the promptness of St. Joseph's obedience to God and his holy will. St. Joseph also tells us today in the gospel that before the angel approached him and appeared to him, he had decided to divorce the Blessed Virgin Mary quietly. Some of the church fathers have said that St. Joseph originally decided to do this not because he was suspicious of Mary, that she had been unfaithful. Rather, St. Joseph, in humility, thought himself unworthy to be so closely associated or involved in such a great work of God. He had a holy fear and reverence. And then, therefore, he decided to distance himself, to quietly back away discreetly. It's then that God communicates his plan to Joseph in a dream. 
and the fear or consideration of his unworthiness that he had experienced, it makes sense in light of how the angel responded to him, how the angel greeted him. The angel did not say, do not be angry. He said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical on St. Joseph, which was entitled Guardian of the Redeemer, he commented that even though St. Joseph decided to draw back so as not to interfere in the plan of God, which was coming to pass in Mary, he did obey the explicit command of God. And he took Mary into his house while respecting the fact that she belonged entirely to God. Again, he was willing to set aside his own plans and to obey God's plan when it was made clear to him. St. Bernard of Clairvaux in one of his sermons would likewise say of St. Joseph, why did he wish to leave her? Listen now no longer to my opinion, but to that of the fathers. Joseph wanted to leave her for the same reason Peter begged the Lord to leave him. When he said, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And for the same reason, the centurion kept him from his house. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. He saw with fear and trembling that she bore the surest signs of the divine presence. And St. Bernard would add, Are you surprised that Joseph judged himself unworthy of the pregnant virgin's company? After all, have you not heard that St. Elizabeth, too, could not endure her presence without fear and awe? As she says, Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? St. Joseph, as mentioned earlier, and the title of Pope John Paul II's encyclical is also known as the guardian, as the protector. He's the patron of the universal church. During his life, he was entrusted with the care of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of our Lord, and he was given all the graces necessary to do so. He supported them by his daily work as a carpenter, and he protected them. And we see a great example of this, particularly during his flight into Egypt and their return when Herod had sought to destroy the Christ child. St. Joseph was also named, again, protector of the church by Pope Pius IX in 1870. Pope John Paul II would later explain that just as St. Joseph took loving care of Mary and gladly dedicated himself to Jesus Christ's upbringing, he likewise watches over and protects Christ's mystical body, the church of which the Virgin Mary is the exemplar and model. In addition, we can look to St. Joseph. We see him as a model of prayer, of the interior life. He shows us the importance of silence and the interior life. And the only word attributed to St. Joseph in the Holy Gospels is the Holy Name. In the very first chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, we're told that after the birth of the Lord, St. Joseph called his name, Jesus, right? So that's the only reference that we have. Commenting on the importance of silence in the spiritual life, Pope Benedict XVI said that St. Joseph's silence was steeped in contemplation and was woven of constant prayer, a prayer of blessing of the Lord, of the adoration of his holy will, and of unreserved entrustment to his providence. He would say further, let us allow ourselves to be filled with St. Joseph's silence in a world that is often too noisy, that encourages neither recollection nor listening to God's voice. We are in such deep need of it, this interior silence. And further, we can look at the joy that St. Joseph no doubt experienced, particularly in the company of Jesus and Mary, as he had Our Lady as his constant companion and having lived under the same roof of our Lord as he raised him. We know St. Joseph certainly endured hardships and suffering in his life, and he worked by the sweat of his brow to support the Holy Family, but daily being in the company of and in the presence of Jesus and Mary, that most certainly helped lighten his burden of his work and the sufferings that he endured. If we think about it like St. Joseph, we're also under the same roof of our Lord when we come into the chapel, when our Lord's present in the Blessed Sacrament. So we pray that we become familiar with the Lord just as St. Joseph did during those years of Christ's upbringing. 
And on this feast day, we also recall that St. Joseph is a very powerful intercessor. St. Augustine would say that, what could our Lord refuse to St. Joseph, who never refused him anything during his mortal life on earth? And St. Teresa of Avila would later add, I wish I could persuade everyone to be devoted to the glorious St. Joseph, for I have great experience of the blessings which he can obtain from God. I do not remember that I have ever asked anything of him which he has failed to grant. And one of the things that the church encourages us to ask St. Joseph's intercession for is the grace of a happy and a holy death. He is the patron of a happy death, as he would have died certainly in the presence of Jesus and Mary. And we ask his intercession today for protection, that we might be given the grace to protect those who are under our care, that we might grow in interior silence and prayer, and for the grace of a happy and a holy death. And I'll conclude with this prayer to St. Joseph for the grace of a happy death. O glorious St. Joseph, Behold, I choose you today for my special patron in life and at the hour of my death. Preserve and increase in me the spirit of prayer and fervor in the service of God. Remove far from me every kind of sin. Obtain for me that my death may not come upon me unaware, but that I may have time to confess my sins sacramentally and to bewail them with the most perfect understanding and a most sincere and perfect contrition, in order that I may breathe forth my soul into the hands of Jesus and Mary. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our petitions to God, our Father, who gave us St. Joseph as a guardian and intercessor. The St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, will guide and protect the Holy Father in his work of proclaiming the good news of salvation to the entire world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed and cannot find work, and for the disabled and the sick, that through the intercession of St. Joseph, the Lord will assist them in their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that every father may see in St. Joseph a patron and model of holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That parents and children will imitate the love of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in the Holy Family. We pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of St. Joseph, those who die today may have a holy and peaceful death. We pray to the Lord. Lord.
Lord God, you entrusted to St. Joseph the mission of guarding Jesus and Mary, your two most precious treasures. Grant that he may also be our guardian and protector, leading us always towards the goal of our heavenly homeland. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care, your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Bobiscum. Gracias agamos, Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God and on the solemnity of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri omnipotenti, 
in unitate spiritu sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, vies in celis, sancti vincetur momentum, alveni atrevutum, via voluntas tua, si put in cero et in terra, Pater nostrum quotidian, Quisumus domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tui adiuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni pertabatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, nere spicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, eam que secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare et coadunare dignieris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Come, share your master's joy. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My good Lord, my dear Jesus, I am sorry for having wounded thy loving heart by my sins, because thou art infinitely good, and sin displeases thee. Like the beloved disciple, let me rest upon thy heart, and let me grieve together with thee for the outrages that are committed against thee in this sacrament of thy love. I give thee my heart and my love, if my poor love can comfort thee. I love thee above all things, and I desire to possess thee within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, and nourish my soul unto life everlasting. Let my soul, O Lord, feel thy sweetness. Let me taste how sweet thou art, O Lord, that being a Lord by thy love, I may never sin by running after worldly pleasures. Thou art the God of my heart, and the God that is my portion for ever. O thou Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, take away from me whatever may hurt me and displease thee. Give me thy love and thy grace. May the sweet flame of thy love consume my soul, that I may die to the world for the love of thee, as thou hast died upon the cross for the love of me. Amen.
Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Fobiscum. Et Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite misa est. Prayerful vocations. God our Father, who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth, we beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified, and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us. And he called to him.